Hi, my name is Joe Reiner, and I'm a technical content advocate covering AI and data center for the Learn with Cisco organization. And today, I want to talk a little bit about network fundamentals. Part of this series of videos is regarding the Cisco CCNA certification, Cisco Certified Network Associate. I took it myself for the first time in the 2000s, literally in 2000. And there were a lot of things that I picked up from studying this for the CCNA that really helped me in my networking career. So we're going to talk about sort of networking basics here today. So we'll talk, just make some introductory comments. We'll talk about this information superhighway sort of analogy of explaining networks. We'll just give a brief overview of networking components, and then we'll wrap up. So just by way of introduction, the CCNA, the Cisco Certified Network Associate, is normally the entry point for a lot of individuals wanting to get into IT. It's usually a starting point. It's not the only certification there is. Cisco has some junior level certifications like the CCST. There's also CompTIA's Network Plus and others, but it is, there's usually some certification that really gives you the start and understand that technology. To succeed in IT, you have to have an understanding of how networks operate, at least at a basic level. And we're going to use some analogies to kind of explain what may seem very mysterious and strange about how networks operate, but ultimately enjoy the journey. So I want to employ an analogy. The internet at one time was referred to as the information superhighway, and it's not talked about it that way so much now, but it's still a good term. When I worked for AT&T back in the early 2000s, there were a lot of voice reps, voice salespeople that didn't understand networks, so they were going to have a difficult time selling network services. So this is sort of where the genesis of this came from. It's, again, an analogy. Analogies break down at some point, but it really does explain a lot of the intricacies of how networks operate. All right, so ultimately networks are about communication. So let's start you as an individual person. You want to go from one point to another point. How are you going to do that? It'll probably involve some type of vehicle. And as you do in most cases, when you're traveling or using a GPS, you have a starting point and any point an address of sorts. So you get into your vehicle, in this case, a car, and then you're going to have to access a series of roads. Now, this is very simplified. Normally, when you're going to a highway, there's a lot of surface streets and things like that. Don't worry about that for the case of this. But essentially, you get into the car and you head to the highway. You access the highway by an on-ramp. We've done this probably numerous times. You then enter the highway. You drive along it for some period of time until you get to your egress point, your exit. You take your off-ramp. You get to your destination. And then you get out of the car and, in this case, probably go into the building. So starting point, ending point, medium, or route of travel. So a couple things just to look at in this analogy. First, you have a starting point or starting address. You have your highway ingress. You have the highway itself, your route of travel. Your off-ramp, your ending point. Now let's shift from the analogy to the reality. This is a picture of a very simple network. But notice here, you have not a physical address, but a network address, this 10.10.10.4. Don't worry about the intricacies of that now. But this, anything that's being sent will have that as its source address, and the destination address is this 10.20.20.5. And the devices know where that lives. So for example, this computer may be looking for a web page, and it sends a web request through a series of packets. Think of them as containers. They all contain a piece of data. The data is split up into different pieces, put in each one of these, and they traverse the network a lot like a set of boxcars on rails. And then when it gets to the destination machine, the data is taken back out of those packets and reassembled. That's how you can get emails and web pages and any number of things. But this is the basic way a network operates. You still have these sort of on-ramps referred to as network access. It's usually copper wire, fiber, or some kind of radio signal using wireless LANs. But this is how the internet is built and how networks operate numerous times every day. 